Hello everybody, I'm uh, Guy Lombardou. Uh, as uh, Otman said, uh, I am just arriving from uh, west of France where we are based uh, for organizing, organizing those expeditions under the pole expeditions. Uh, I have a link uh, to Geneva as uh, I lived uh, here for, not in Geneva, but in the region uh, for a few years when I was uh, younger, when I was a teenager and then a student uh, as I, I, I have been studying in EPFL in, in Lausanne. So I'm very happy also to, to be back here, to see friends and to have the opportunity to, to present uh, the job I'm leading since a few years. Just before uh, going in the, the deep of the, the risk question, uh, a short introduction uh, you saw on the, the film, uh, basically what we are doing, adventure, expeditions. Uh, we are specialized in underwater polar exploration. Uh, I started more or less 10 years ago in 2007. For the first time, I had the opportunity to go to the North Pole with a French polar explorer, Dr. Jean-Louis Etienne. Uh, I was dreaming to, to work in this sort of uh, uh, organization uh, for a long time. I've always been close to the nature and to... I was dreaming of adventure, but uh, I thought it was difficult maybe to, to move forward and to, to once uh, maybe uh, touch uh, this sort of dream, but um, after two years working with him, I came back to the EPFL to finish and uh, during the, the same period I started to, to work for a dream uh, which was going back to the North Pole but uh, with a really uh, special project. It was an underwater exploration project at the North Pole in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. So it was under the pole one. Uh, at that time, it was not planned to have a two or three. It was just one mission, one expedition, one goal. And uh, it was uh, quite difficult and audacious. Very, very tough conditions, more or less polar camping and uh, a lot of diving in extremely cold conditions. So that was very engaged. Um, when we came back from, uh, from uh, this expedition, we were uh, we had become uh, uh, like entrepreneurship uh, to, to manage uh, and to, to reach our goal. We had to create a society, we had to create an association. And uh, after that, we asked ourselves, what are we doing now? Are we going on? Are we keep going, mo moving forward in this direction of the exploration? But then we have to, to become professional. How are we going to do that? Because financial uh, model of such a uh, um, sort of uh, activity or business is very difficult and will be always. So we had to, to find a way, but finally, uh, after three years of work, we took departure, we went to Greenland uh, for two years and we just came back uh, two years ago, uh, no, six months uh, ago. It was in September 2015 in Concarneau. Uh, all of our work is really focused on underwater exploration as diving is my first passion after uh, maybe flying, but I, I've not become a pilot, but I became a diver and uh, I wanted to, to, to know more about the, the North, about the Arctic and then maybe tomorrow about the Antarctic. So our first expedition, uh, by the way, was, was uh, sponsored by a, a local sponsor, which is Roex, that has been a uh, huge kick, kick up for us. Tomorrow, uh, we are going to work on a new expedition. Uh, we have a new sponsor coming, just arriving, uh, uh, Clarence. And uh, in the five uh, coming years, we, we go back around the world. We'll be uh, in the Arctic again uh, in a few, few months. And uh, then uh, uh, in a few years, we'll go to Antarctica. And this will be end of the part three. Our work is really focused on three main aspects, science, documentation, and education in partnership with the French uh, Ministry of uh, Education. But always, and I think this is an aspect really uh, close to, to the one of uh, innovation uh, or exploration, which is innovation, and um, entrepreneurship, is really the idea to be always uh, um, like in advance on what we already know. This is really exploration. And so always innovative and bold uh, projects. So here we, we go to, to the main topic, the, the risk question. The risk question is very interesting because uh, you find the risk uh, everywhere, in every activity, in everyday uh, life. 
um, and for sure in uh, our professional uh, professional activity, uh, you you find it in the bank. Uh, you find it in any business and you find it in uh, your life uh, every day when you have to make choice uh, and uh, sometimes to, to decide to take a direction or another. So I'm going to, to study uh, the risk aspect on uh, our uh, business, on our activity, which is exploration. But behind uh, the exploration, behind the images, there's... Um, there is uh, realities, uh, which are realities to um, very practical realities uh, to the work, to the financial, to the economy, to the human managing of such a project. And it's very, it can be very tough. The first thing when we decide to, to organize an expedition, uh, the first thing is it comes from an ID. OK, let's do that. We are going to do under the pole three. We are going all over the world. We are going in the Arctic. We are going in the Antarctic. And maybe we'll make some very deep dives. What are the objectives? Where are we going? What are we going to do? This is the first thing I think we have to, to ask. And close, um, um, associated to those objectives, uh, immediately there are uh, some risk, some risk uh, of uh, being able to reach those objectives or not, for example. And the, the important question is uh, to to evaluate what is the level of innovation in your project. Uh, are the objectives too high or too low? Are we going to be innovative or not? And um, linked to this question of innovation, it's uh, the question of engagement. Uh, polar regions or mountain, for example, are really, um, are really uh, the image. I, I mean, the, the environment is very, uh, uh, I search my words, uh, uh, no, I, I mean, it's uh, the image talk by themselves. Uh, uh, they, inspire, they inspire this question of engagement. But the very important thing is to, to wonder where do you put the cursor? Okay, we want to be innovative. We want to, to go further than we have ever been before. Uh, but what level of risk can I take by myself uh, in my life, with my family life, in my professional life? Uh, with my team, all together, okay, we want to reach those objectives, but how to reach them, how to be as audacious as possible, but uh, always this uh, um, importance to control uh, the question of the risk. First, the first risk, uh, I mean, the first objective, uh, the risk will come just after, but they are closely linked to those ideas. The first objective, in a project, in an exploration project, for sure, is the safety of the team. Because bringing back everybody, and uh, if possible with all the fingers, for example, or the knees, uh, is uh, really something basic. So you have to wonder first, what do you have to do to come back uh, from uh, such a very engaged uh, environment uh, with everybody uh, safely, safely. The second one is really the mission uh, of uh, the, the job. So this is uh, very concrete. For example, in our world, uh, in our, our job, uh, the mission can be scientific. We have to make samples. We have uh, to make measurements. We have to make data. We have to analyze. For that, we have to bring people. We have to bring scientific and to organize all of that. Another one can be uh, documentation. Uh, we make film, we make picture, we make press, etc. So how I am going to do uh, to, to reach those goals, for example? The uh, team is the financial management. Uh, because as every project, there are some uh, economic reality uh, that you have to deal with and that, uh, with, uh, with which you have to, to fit. Uh, this is really the, the goal in my activity of first the project manager, uh, which works uh, before, for example, uh, the expedition on the ground. Uh, this is where you, you organize, this is where you, 
um, you prepare all the expeditions and you have to think about everything and you have to, to get funds and you have to get equipment and so and so. And after on the ground, the project manager becomes the project leader, the, the, the expedition leader we call it. Uh, it, it can be the same person or not, and uh, on the ground, the, the chief, the expedition chief, uh, has the responsibility to to always keep in mind what are the objectives, safety, mission, and financial management of the project. So, after links to to those. Um, to those uh, objectives, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, you have to identify what are the risks. Uh, what are the risks concerning the safety? For sure, I'm talking about the human. There can be external or internal uh, conditions. External can be uh, the environment. It can be uh, the temperature. It can be the stress. It can be uh, uh, the family difficulties. I mean. It depends, I'm not talking about only the poles, I think it's really the external environment of uh, people, uh, individually or a group of people, that can interfere in, um, in the mission. Or they can be internal ones, uh, like uh, um, uh, sickness? Yeah, sickness, uh, yes, uh, la santé. Uh, Health, thank you very much. Yes, oh. so um, there are different sort of, uh, of uh, risks that you have to think about, that you have to identify, and you have to plan all the different uh, conditions uh, uh, that are uh, necessary to reach the, the goals. Uh, it can be physiological, it can be psychological, it can be physical, and sometimes you cannot detect in advance. You think you know everything. You think you know you have planned everything, but finally, on the ground, you discover something that you could not have imagined before. But I will come back to that uh, later. Concerning the, the mission uh, risk, uh, there can be many, many, many uh, aspects that can interfere and uh, go against uh, your your uh, objectives. It can be uh, for sure linked to human self-fulfillment. This is very important. Uh, once again, uh, the one of a, an individual person or the one of a group. It can be uh, for equipment uh, or services reasons. Uh, it can be for um, the experience. Uh, this is something very important. So the, the knowledge of uh, the mission, of the ground, of, uh, of the job you have to to do. And for sure, I always have the, the financial risk, which is uh, essential and one of the main ones. As I said, I, I always put the human risk and the safety of the team uh, at the first, because this is the most important thing. But the financial risk is uh, something very important also, because you can get the, the fund, for example, to, to, to drive a project, to lead a project, and to, to move forward uh, with a project. But the financial aspect can change, can evaluate, and you can be engaged more than planned. And on some projects, uh, you can put your life also uh, in the balance. And uh, at a point, it's always the same thing. Where do you put the cursor? Uh, where do you start? Where do you stop? And how do you engage yourself? When, if I make uh, just a, uh, like a summary of all those aspects I have uh, identified here, for, for sure there are some others, but just basically when uh, I look uh, backwards on, uh, on my experience and on those different expeditions I've been uh, participated to or uh, leading, these are really some points that come back all the time. The human risk, the mission risk, the financial risk, with all those aspects uh, that you can read here or that I have um, talked to briefly. And most of all those risks, I, I would say all of those risks, can really be uh, um, uh, they can be really be um, uh, diminuted. 
Diminished. Dimin diminuted. Diminuted. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, or totally, uh, th you can make them totally disappear uh, with a good preparation and training. I really think that the preparation, the training uh, in advance of a project is a key point of the success of an innovative onboard uh, project. For example, on our first expedition at the pole in 2010, it was extremely engaged physically, technically, psychologically, logistically, financially. It was top level engagement. We trained, we prepared it for three years, full time, seven days a week, 16 hours a day. There were only that in our life for three years. We trained for two months uh, on the ground, in the mountains, in uh, the, um, north of Europe. And finally, we could do the job. We had many, many, many difficulties. We were really in hell, but after a few days, little by little, you keep calm and you try just to be focused on uh, the protocol and the procedure and the work that has to be done. And little by little, you start to dominate, uh, to dominate the, the environment and you get adapted and you can little by little start to, to work for your goals, for your objectives. And finally, we did the job. It was extreme condition, minus 40 degrees, minus 50 degrees, and uh, we did 51 dives below the ice, and that was a huge success. I think the, the preparation, training, it depends on the project, but it can really guarantee 70 to 80 to 90 persons of the success of the project. Because, for example, on the human aspect, while preparing, while training, while testing, you will know more on the team, you will know more on the body, you will know more also on the equipment, you will know more on uh, what's uh, good, what's not, uh, what you have to develop, uh, what you have to change. Uh, what sort of research you have to, to make, what change in the team you have to do to, have to operate. And little by little, you know more on the team, on the equipment, on the services you need to reach the goals and to avoid the risk uh, that you have identified. In, in one word, it's experience. And as much a project is engaged, as much the, the, the goals are um, relevant, are difficult, are, uh, as much as the, the project is innovative and bold, uh, as much the experience is really essential. And you don't have to have uh, 20 years of experience to make, to make big projects and to, to reach very, very ambitious goals. When I started, I had not finished my studies, uh, I came back to school, I was working on my project uh, in parallel. I was 27 when I wrote it. And I did the first one, I was 30 years old and uh, some people thought I was very, very ambitious, maybe too much. But no, I, I just had a dream and I worked extremely hard to reach it. And little by little, step by step, we did it. And then we redid it a second time on the, the next uh, project. The second key point, I think, of, um, of the success of innovative and bold expeditions and bold projects in general uh, is the, the leadership, the, it's the human aspect on the ground. When you are in, the, the, in the, the reality of the project, when you are in the difficult part of the project, it's really on the human. The leadership, for, exa for example, which is extremely important because the leader of the project drives is uh, um, the locomotive of the train, I would say. Uh, so he has to be strong. He has to he has to be. Um, um, I just come back to that. Um, the leadership, the leader, is very important uh, to drive everybody. But the team, I, I just said that before. Uh, is as important uh, as uh, the leader is. It's really a group, um, uh, a, a group uh, uh, approach of the, the difficulties, sharing the difficulties and sharing the responsibilities. And I think this is uh, essential uh, to share the, the job, to share 
the responsibility and little by little uh, to accomplish the work all together. And when you don't have to, when you, when you don't have any more time uh, for planning, when you don't have any more time to think or to reevaluate or to change the plan, uh, it's at that uh, uh, time that uh, the team uh, is essential to reach uh, the goals. And it's something like, I would say on expeditions, something like for 20 or 30 percent uh, of the management of, of the project. Everything else is really during the preparation. And on the ground, if you have the good preparation, if you have the good team, if you have the good uh, training, uh, you can do it if you are very well trained. So the leader quality is essential. I was talking about uh, authority, about charisma, about fairness, this is something essential, I think, uh, in uh, the management of a, a team. And for sure, I come back to the knowledge and I come back to the experience. Because once again, on an innovative project, on a difficult project, on engaged uh, adventure, you have to get experience and you get it by training. And the second part uh, is uh, the team. The team balance, the team harmony. Uh, I, I just uh, talked about it. Uh, everybody has a place on the project and everybody has a responsibility and we move all together in the same direction, led by the leader. Briefly, uh, for sure, uh, you cannot control everything. Uh, there is always a part of unknown there is always something you have not thought to. There is a human um, failure. Uh, sometimes you don't know where you are going. You don't know exactly. You can plan, you can think, you can talk, you can share with uh, people around you, with your environment, with other professionals, with the elders. But you don't know, you, you can find the the answers to all the questions you are wondering. And you cannot find also, uh, you, you cannot think about everything. And this is human for sure. And uh, I think this is uh, really what is beautiful also in uh, innovation in, and in exploration. Exploration is really part of innovation because it, uh, it put questions on the table. And innovation comes then to, with solutions, technical solution or, or, or anything else. And both of innovation and exploration work together to move forward. And there will be always a part of unknown. When you go to the North Pole, for example, uh, to, to make those dives, when you, you plan to, to dive very, very far below the ice to, to explore this living environment, you don't know in advance what, are, what are, will be the, the difficulties, but if you have been very well trained, you can avoid most of them. If you have a good team, you can really uh, balance the difficulty on the ground. And afterwards, there will be always a small part uh, of uh, chance. This is the luck part. And uh, even if you have uh, done the maximum to, to reach the goals and to avoid the risk, on innovative projects, with exploration, there will be always a small part of risk. And uh, this is also what's fantastic because uh, it means that uh, there, is, there will be always exploration to, to, to do and to operate. And uh, this is something that will never change. And uh, this is, I think, in the nature of the humanity, it's really to explore in all uh, the, the activities uh, and uh, this is really something uh, that makes sense to, to the life, I think. This is all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I'm here to answer a few questions if you have. <laughs>